Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz and today we've got another special. This time we're going to look at the history of a single tank, the Panzerkampfwagen IV, also known as just the Panzer IV. This was the German army workhorse of their tanks in World War II. It was by far their most popular tank. And we do have this tank in World of Tanks, Blitz and World of Tanks, but does it really do it any justice? So I thought we'd have a look at the development history and the history as a whole of this tank. Now, I forewarn you, it's a long video, even though it's only one tank. This tank is more numerous in its variations than any other type of German tank and possibly any type of tank ever made. The origins of this tank are actually quite surprising. It was a concept for a support tank with the Panzerkampfwagen III being the main battle tank oddly enough and it was initially conceived in 1934 and it went out to tender to the usual suspects which are Krupp Rhine Metal Borsig and Man. Unfortunately, I don't have any pictures of the prototypes, the initial prototypes by Borsig or Krupp. It was initially designated the Battalion Führer Wagen 1. Again, unfortunately, I don't have a picture of that. But Krupp did do a second version called the Battalion Führer Wagen 2 or BW2, and that is a picture of the chassis of a BW2. And as you can see, it has six road wheels, not the eight that eventually ended up being on the Panzer IV. The idea that Krupp and everybody came up with was it was going to be a support tank, which is why it had the little stubby 75mm gun. And there is the fuller version of the BW. Too. As you can see, this is just a prototype, and it's it's very similar in a lot of respects to the Panzer III. The thing is, they found this six-wheeled version not particularly nice, so Krupp went back and effectively stole the idea of an eight-wheeled road version from this tank, the Gross Tractor, which, oddly enough, we do have in the game. Now, the Gross Tractor is only related to the Panzer IV in so far as of the wheels in the transmission, where Krupp decided that it was much better to use this type of road wheel arrangement. And that became the basis of what is called the VK622. VK standing for Verschutzkraft Versung, which basically means experimental or prototype. Unfortunately, I have no pictures of the initial prototype um, other than this which is actually a Panzer Alf A, which is what the VK622 eventually ended up becoming without any other modifications. And this is the first tank that we come across in the game of World of Tanks, World of Tanks Blitz. It's the first Panzer IV. Now, it has the very short stubby 75mm gun, which isn't that great. But you have to appreciate this was made and the production started on this tank in 1937 and it actually ended in 1938 with 35 of these being made like i said it was only initially conceived as a support tank it was never conceived as a main battle tank and it was conceived as a sort of tank that it would be used as a command vehicle with the, all the main battle tanks at that time being Panzer III's which was really bizarre because this was basically an upgraded version well it was a longer version of the Panzer III the concept behind the, the Panzer IV therefore was seriously it was it was meant to just be a heavier tank have better communications give it some support capabilities but like I say eventually effectively be a command wagon in the game um, we have this version 
which it does have the very short stubby 75 millimeter gun and anybody who's played this tank will know that it takes a long time to load it isn't exactly the best gun the armor on the tank isn't exactly the best either and those tanks there those panzer threes really can hurt it the other thing you'll note about the panzer 4a is that it has basically a panzer 3 turret and there is a real life Panzer IV Alf A. Germans, however, were not impressed with this tank and they needed to get it upgraded, which led to the Alf B. Now, for those of you who don't know, Alf means Ausführung, which basically means variant. So this is variant B. What they did here in 1938, they increased the frontal armor and they improved the Maybach engine. They gave it better driver's vision and visibility and they removed the split hatches on the driver's hatch to a single piece hatch that was about it they didn't really do much else as you can see it very similar to the version a they built 42 of these as i say in 1938 but again the germans were not fully satisfied so they decided to upgrade it even further to the alf c externally you're not going to see much difference between the B and the C because all that really they did was put an armored sleeve around the barrel of the coax machine gun and that's all they really did they increased the engine power to 300 horsepower rather than the 265 they built 134 of these between 1938 and 1939 but never satisfied they continued tinkering until they came up with the ALF D. This is where the Germans really start to, to, to produce the Panzer IV in greater numbers. We do have this tank in the game. It does exist. There is a Panzer IV D. What they did here, they firstly put a front mounted machine gun onto the, the tank uh, near the driver's port they upgraded the turret as you can see in the game the turret was upgraded this however has the wrong gun the game version because it still had a 75 millimeter short barrel they tinkered with the driver's hatch and made it stepped forward and added pistol ports so the driver could shoot things as well the gun mounting was improved um, with giving it a thicker armored mantle and they also increased the armor on the front hull by the time 1940 came along they started adding armor plates as well to the front of the hull to give it that extra bit of protection effectively it was still based very much like the version c it still had that short stubby gun um, it just had greater armor and you know it still had the same engine the engine had not changed either this is really the first time that the Germans started to produce the Panzer IV in any significant numbers. 248 of the House Ds were made between 1938 and 1939. And they did see combat in the invasion of Poland, the battle for the Low Countries and the Battle of France. The Germans still, however, kept that 75mm gun because during this time of the war they found no problems with the armor that they were facing especially with the poles the french and the british that however would change later they still needed to tinker with the tank however and they came up with this the alf e aesthetically it's not that dissimilar to the version d they just re-tinkered with the way that it was produced they produced 223 of these between 1940 and 1941. Basically what they did, they improved the commander's hatch, they added a smoke grenade launcher that was armoured on the rear deck, and they started to make the turret as a single plate with pistol ports. They also increased the front armour slightly. With Operation Barbarossa and the invasion of Russia, they needed to upgrade the tank even further. This time, they needed to have thicker armor plate, thicker turret armor, 
and wider tracks to deal with the Russian terrain. And they came up with this. This is the ALF F, or most reliably known, the F1. And it is the last of the short 75mm barreled versions of the Panzer IV. Around 464 of these were made between 1941 and 1942. The thing is, the Germans started encountering KV-1s and T-34s and the short barrel was no good anymore. It just didn't pack the punch. So they had to come up with this, the ALF G, which is also known as the F2. This is the very first of what is called the long barreled Panzer IVs. 1,687 of these were made between 1942 and 1943. It initially intended to have the Pac 38 L60 gun on it, but the prototype built by Krupp found that it really struggled against the KV-1s and T-34s and therefore they upgraded the gun to the Pac-40 AL-46 which was actually called the KWK-40. Effectively it was a modified version of the Pac-40 whereby they improved the muzzle brake to reduce recoil inside the turret. They found that this gun was vastly superior. It could actually penetrate 77 millimeters armor from a distance of 1,850 meters, which is pretty significant. By now, the Germans had completely dropped the concept of the Panzer III becoming their main battle tank because its gun just couldn't stand up to the Russian armor. And they decided to convert most of their Panzer III's to Stug III's and other such SPGs. Whilst the ALF GF2 was a good tank, the Germans upgraded it even further in 1943 to what is called the transitional tank or the ALF G. This was a much improved version to the ALF GF2 and oddly enough we do have this version in the game as the Panzer IV ALF. Well, it's just called the Panzer IV. They haven't given it a variation number. What they did with this tank, they gave it much better armour than the F2. They increased the, the weight, however, which led to transmission problems. They improved the commander's cupola, um, and it does differ significantly from the previous Panzer IV models. The armour, however, still wasn't that spectacular, and they were facing difficulties, especially on the Russian front. So, during the factory productions phase they would start to add Scherzen which is basically the skirt armor that you can see on this version around the turret it also had it along the sides and it was pretty thick and it sort of gave an additional spaced armor protection to the tanks now the ALF G a lot of people think is the most popular version actually it is not it really is just a transitional tank it's the move away from the alpha a's all the way through to f with that short barrel putting in that longer barrel in effectively tinkering with the engine and tinkering with the armor they are increasing the armor periodically you can see here on this version um, when you look at it from above they've got rid of that step that used to be there for the driver and they just made it a more streamlined tank which allowed them to produce it a lot quicker they didn't put too much armor on as I said with the additional armor that they had already given to this tank it led to massive weight problems which led to transmission failures across the board Nevertheless, it was a nice tank. By now, the Panzer III, uh, had, as a tank, had been phased out completely. They were still hanging around, but generally they were being used now to be converted into Stug III's. And this is where it becomes interesting, because it was discovered that the Stug III vastly outgunned and was more superior than this Panzer IV ALF G. And that was a concern for the Germans because obviously the, the Stug III was effectively a tank based on a lower version of a tank 
and it was vastly superior to this tank which was their main battle tank but as I said the Aus G F2 of which this is well it's not an F2 the Aus G is actually a transition tank it's it's the move away from the previous short barrels into a more designed long barrel and anybody who's played this tank in the game understands that it hasn't got brilliant gun and it hasn't got the best armor but it was one of the most popular tanks during world war ii for the germans that however was soon to change and it changed to what we call the main version which is the alf h in this version they made 3774 tanks between 1943 and 1944 they upgraded the gun first to the cac 40 l 48 they tinkered around with the hull they also started to upgrade the front armor and scherzen came as standard around the turret and on the sides as you've just seen there in 1943 they also started adding a paste called Zimmerit which is a anti-mine magnetic paste. We do have this tank in the game however it's not a German tank it is a girls and panzer Japanese tank which is really really odd because this was by far the most produced Panzer IV by the Germans in the whole of the war i mean it absolutely outstrips all the other panzer fours i mean almost four thousand of these were made the other thing they did they added a mg anti-aircraft gun to the top of the turret and they vastly over you know it vastly improved it simple fact and like i said i i just find it bizarre that this tank doesn't sit in any of the German tech trees, preferring the Alf G, which was a transition tank. This is the main version of the Panzer IV, and it sits as a Japanese tank in a fictional girls and Panzer sort of cartoon line, which I find completely bemusing considering its history. This, is, however, is called the Panzer Anko SPG in the game. Um, but it is actually a Panzer IV Alf H. <laughs> That's what it actually is. So I don't know why Wargaming have done this. You'd have to ask Wargaming. The Germans loved this tank. Um, it was very good during the war. It could hold its own against the KV-1s, uh, the T-34-76 and the t 3485 they produced this all the way up until 1944 and they found okay it was still produced in significant numbers and it didn't struggle with most of the tanks it faced on the battlefield the gun was vastly superior to the Alf G it's a nice tank I'm just surprised we don't have it in the game the Panzer IV Alf H here is a picture of one with its Zimmerit paste and full shirts and that is in the Samoa Museum in France. It's, it's, I mean, that is a spectacular looking tank. This is also a Alf H, again with the Zimmerit paint, but by this stage of the war, they wouldn't giving them the full side shears and they were using the wire mesh instead. Because at this stage of the war, they were losing materials. It led to this, the Panzer IV Alf J. This is the final type, and it was actually called the simplified version. What they did here, firstly, they removed the electric motor for the turret reverse. You had to do it manually. They increased the fuel capacity because they discovered that uh, in Russia, the fuel tanks in the Panzer IV was not good enough. They removed the turret anti-aircraft gun. They also removed the, pits, the pistol ports. Schertzen, um, was removed along with the uh, Zimmerit paste and they started to put on this mesh skirt as you can see here. They also removed the engine and replaced it with a Panzer III SSG 77 engine which was totally unreliable. Later on they started to marry 
a Schmaltern or Panther turret to the top. Unfortunately, I don't have a picture of what one looks like in real life. Uh, no pictures exist. That's what, obviously, it would have looked like. We do have it in the game as the Panzer IV Schmaltern. I do have a picture of a Schmaltern turret. That's what a Schmaltern turret looks like. And there is one remaining in Bobbington Tank Museum, although it does look slightly battered. This is a, a very late war tank. This is 1945. By this stage, the Germans were running out of raw materials. They, as I said, they changed the transmission. So it's a good job that in the game we don't have these transmission issues because the tank wouldn't bloody move. It broke down a lot. The side skirts were shears and as I said, were wire mesh because they just didn't have the resources to make them fully metal anymore. The Schmaltern turret it was a very narrow, smaller turret, so it required less material to make, which is why they started marrying them. Not many were married to Panzer IV halls, but it did exist. Uh, most notably, they were used in the Battle of Berlin. But there isn't much combat history known of the Panzer IV with the Panther Schmaltern turret unfortunately and as I said I haven't found any pictures of what one looks like in real life I'm afraid this really was the very final version I mean this is late war 1945 the end of World War II did not signal the end of the patterns of four however it saw action after the war most notably in the 1960s in both the Golan Heights campaign and the Six Day War where it was used by the Syrian army. Apparently, according to the combat history, quite effectively. Mainly because the Israelis at that stage were using things like M4s and Centurions. Things that, you know, that the Panzer IV would have faced in any event during the war, most notably the M4. With the end of the Aust, with, with the variation lines, however, doesn't signify the end of the Panzer IV's development because there were so many variations. And we start with this one, the Hydrostat, or to give it its correct name, the Panzer IV mit Hydrostat CM Antrieb, which was basically a prototype of a tank whereby they wanted to try this electric petrol engine that had been developed by Porsche and was used on the Tiger P, also known as the Elephant in Ferdinand. As far as we know, only one was ever built. It was captured by the Americans at the end of the war, and that one is in Aberdeen Proving Grounds in America. The other thing that they did with the Panzer IV was when they were preparing for Operation Sea Lion, which was the invasion of England, they decided to turn it into what's called a Tausch Panzer, which is basically a submersible tank. That's correct, you heard me, a submersible tank, like a submarine. It never really got off the mark. They converted 42 of these tanks in 1940. Sea Lion didn't take place. There is no history of them being effective in any operation combat-wise, although they may have been used to ford rivers in the Eastern Front. There's just no history of that. One thing they did do, however, following on from the success of the Stug 3, they decided to experiment with various different versions of that. And this one was the Sturmpanzer IV Brumba. That is a picture of one that I took in Kubinka Tank Museum. It was captured at Kursk. Now, 306 of these were made between 1943 and 1945. It was basically a converted Panzer IV with a 15 centimeter gun and a casemate. It was designed for close and direct infantry support and it saw action in Kursk, Anzio and Normandy. They also decided to upgrade it to a Sturmgeschutz IV, mainly because the Stug III was so great, and there is a picture of a Sturmgeschutz IV there. They made 1,108 of these and also converted a further 31. The reasoning behind this was because, as I said, during Kursk, the Stug III outperformed the Panzer IV hands down, so it was decided to make this tank to basically have a Panzer IV with the same capabilities as a Stug 3. That inevitably led to this tank, the Jagdpanzer 4, or the Flat Panzer as we call it in the game. 
In real life this had four versions. In the game we have a version with three guns, the last gun being an 88mm. A gun the flat panzer never actually had fitted. The model you're seeing now is the first production series, it's called Series Zero. It's unknown how many of these were built, it's generally known that these were the prototypes and it eventually led on to the next tank which is the Jag Panzer IV Al-48. 784 of these were built in 1944 and that one there has got the Zimmerit paste and it's uh, on show at the Deutsche Panzer Museum in Münster. That wasn't the most popular, however, the uh, the most numerous of the variations of the Jagdpanzer was this tank, the Jagdpanzer 4L10. V standing for Vomag, the designer of the gun, Lang, Lang standing for German for long, to distinguish it from the L48. This was by far the most popular tank of the Flat Panzer series, with over 940 being built between 1944 and 1945. And that's a picture of a surviving vehicle in the Kubinka Tank Museum in Russia. That was by no means the final variant. This was the final variant, the Jagdpanzer 4 L70A, standing for Alket, who was the designer. 278 of these were built in 1945. It was a much cheaper variation. And this is the only surviving vehicle in Sumer Museum in France. The next variation is also another SPG, that of the Nazhorn or Rhinoceros. 473 were built between 1942 and 1945. It was basically a turretless Pac-43 heavy anti-tank gun mounted onto a Panzer IV chassis. Lightly armoured but an incredibly effective gun and that is a picture of one of the surviving vehicles in Kubinka Tank Museum in Russia. We also have this vehicle in the game, it's a tier 6 Tech Tree German TD. Another SPG was this one, there was another variation, the Hummel or Bumblebee. 714 were built between 1943 and 1945. Very similar to the Brumbar, but like the Nashorn, it didn't have a fixed casemate. That is a surviving vehicle in Samur Tank Museum in France. Moving away now from SPGs to anti aircraft guns, we have the Flak Panzer IV Mobilwagen. 260 of these were built between 1944 and 1945, with the main production model having the 37mm flak gun, as shown here in a surviving example housed in Samur. However, the prototype had the 2cm flat veiling gun. Uh, there's a picture of one there. It wasn't very successful, so they dropped it in favour of the 37mm instead. And there is a captured one there. They also designed this one, the Verbalwind, which uh, 105 of these were built between 1944 and 1945. And as you can see, this one has like a removable turret with two centimeter flak veiling stuck on the top. Not a very successful tank, to be honest with you. It was very thin armor wise, and it was meant to be used in anti-aircraft capacity in any event. Sticking with anti-aircraft, they came up with this, the Ostwind or East Wind. It was basically the 37mm gun of the Mobilwagen encased in a similar turret to that of the Verbalwind. Uh, only 45 of these were made between 1944 and 1945. The last of the anti aircraft variants is this, the Kugel Blitz. Only five were ever made in 1945. There are no surviving examples. That is a picture of a model Kugel Blitz. There is an example surviving of its turret, however, there it is there, and it exists in the anti-aircraft school in Germany, and by all accounts it would have been pretty formidable. Another prototype, which was neither tank, anti-aircraft gun or sound propel gun, is this, the Ausschreck 10 or Grasshopper. Only three of these were ever built in 1942 to 1943, it's the first prototype Waffentrager. Um, as you can see there, it's got a 105mm gun and it was basically mounted on top of a Panzer IV chassis. That is the only known example there in the Aberdeen Proving Grounds in America. It is often confused, however, with this tank, which is the 10.5cm 18-1 ALF 
Geschützwagen 4B, which is a shortened version of the Panzer IV Hull with a 10.5cm gun smacked on the top. It is not the same as the Grasshopper. Ten of these were built and as you can see it has an open turret on like the Grasshopper which has an encased turret. Following on we have the Brückenslager 4 B and C. There were 24 of these built in 1940. They were just converted bridge laying engineering tanks. They were then developed into this, the Brückenlager 4S or the Sturmsteg Panzer IV. Only four of these built in 1940 and it was just an upgraded version. And the final version of all the Panzer IV variants is this, the Berg Panzer IV. 21 of these were built in 1944 and it's basically a recovery vehicle. There's no turret, it's an engineering Panzer recovery vehicle. Nothing more than that. That concludes the history of the Panzer IV. I hope that's been interesting and informative. I have been Fujit. That has been the Panzer IV in all its machinations. By all means, comment, like, and everything below. If you haven't yet, press subscribe. It's a nice thing to do. Those of you who play the game, if you've got any decent replays, send them to me at fujitsblitz at gmail.com or join my Discord server. You can by all means follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And until the next time, I will say, stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking. Because that's what it's all about, having fun and being happy.